Uncover. Most gracious Father of us all, from whom comes all help and blessings, look upon us gathered here, and with thy favor direct us in our actions. Grant us vigilant hearts, give us minds to know thee, diligence to seek thee, and wisdom to find thee. Sanctify us with thy presence, bless us with thy might, and assist us with thy counsel that all our endeavors may begin with thee and through thee may be happily ended. Amen. 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 called away somewhere else on duty that evening. 
It is believed that later, that evening, after the burial, Colonel McRae began the draft for his now famous poem, In Flanders Fields. It reads, In Flanders Fields the poppies blow, Between the crosses, row on row, That mark our place, and in the sky, The larks still bravely singing fly, Scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, Felt dawn, saw sunset glow, Loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with those who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Fields. <coughs> Thank you, Hannah. I would now like to introduce Bruce Smith, a veteran who would like to share some words. Tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. Our fathers God. To thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God our King. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Bruce Smith, and I'm glad to be here with you this morning. Would you bow your heads with me for a prayer? Almighty God, we thank you for those that have gathered here today. You know every veteran by name. You know their needs, both material and spiritual. God, please let every veteran of our nation's armed forces feel truly and appropriately honored by the attention and appreciation of their fellow citizens. Let no one feel forgotten or neglected. Let every man and woman, young or seasoned, feel the deep and enduring gratitude of our nation and its people. You know that veterans can feel isolated and alone, even in the midst of their friends and families, because there are few around who understand their experience. Remind them often that while their, federal, while their fellow human beings may never fully comprehend, you see, you know, and you identify with them in everything. Lord, you know how deep a warrior's wounds go. You know the memories that haunt them and the scars that many of them continue to carry. Please bring healing to those veterans who still hurt. Reward them for their sacrifice their service, and all that they have given. Bless them far beyond all their expectations, and bless our time here today. In your holy name, amen. 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 <clears throat> Once again, my name is Bruce, and I'm humbled to speak with you today. My wife and I are both disabled U.S. Army veterans. I served in the United States Army for almost eight years, and I was uh, medically retired back in 2000. My beautiful wife, Juliet, also served in the United States Army and retired in 2001 after 20 years of dedicated service to our great country. Some of you know us from the, uh, the Veterans Breakfast that's held the first Friday of every month. 
We love coming. We love our veterans. Um, <clears throat> I am a minister who has also served as a pastor. I recently received a, a Master of Arts degree in pastoral counseling from Liberty University down in Virginia. And the highlight of my graduation this past May was that my wife also graduated and was right there by my side. Um, and she is here today, and I'd like for her to stand, please. The military men and women who served and protected the U.S. and who continue to serve and protect come from all walks of life. They are parents, children, grandparents, friends, neighbors, and co-workers, and are an, an important part of their communities. There are some facts to, that I can share with you about veterans. I don't, I don't want to make this too long. Usually at the veterans breakfast, um, I offer the prayer. And one of the veterans that uh, sits across from me, he always says to me, uh, um, well, he calls it a sermon, even though it's just a prayer. He's like, no, let's make this, this uh, this sermon, this sermon short, I said, okay, I'll go over it. <laughs> but today, um, you know, I, I can speak a little bit longer than, than a prayer, so uh, I'm thankful for that opportunity. But there are many things that I can share about the veterans and the different wars and, and how many that served. We are so grateful to our veterans. There is one, one regrettable statistic, and that is the number of our military veterans who are homeless. Um, I'd just like to share a little bit with you that I came across recently. It says, the words veteran and homeless don't seem like worthy companions. Between the Department of Veterans Affairs, state veterans agencies, and the hundreds of organizations that advocate on behalf of our men and women in uniform, you might think that a homeless veteran is a rare thing. According to the 2014 Annual Homeless Assessment Report, to Congress or AHAR, former members of the United States Armed Forces make up about 11% of the 442,723 total homeless adults. That's 49,933 homeless veterans. There are four states that com comprise a large portion of the homeless veteran population. California, Florida, Texas, and New York make up close to half of all the population with 21,908. And California also made the list for the highest rate of unsheltered veterans with 63.2% or 7,639 unsheltered veterans. Veteran homelessness is a widespread problem that requires a creative solution. While many may uh, think that a federal top-down approach is the best strategy to help get former soldiers back on their feet, local grassroots organizations are often the key indicator for success. The VA has realized that the best approach to help veterans is to tap grassroots communities. It should not be surprising that the VA is modeling the successful veterans advoc advocacy groups who do the hard work at the local level to provide for our heroes in uniform. The National Coalition for Homeless Veterans says that the most effective assistance for homeless veterans is provided by community-based organizations that work within the local networks offering a range of services from housing to continuing case management and counseling. Helping a veteran who is homeless, jobless, or suffering from mental health issues won't be solved by federal dollars and bureaucratic communities bureaucratic com committees. The best medicine for those in the homeless veteran population and other at-risk veterans groups is the help they get at the local level from everyday Americans. Volunteering, financial donations, and networking with community-based groups for important veteran services are the difference between getting a homeless veteran to a shelter and leaving them on the streets. I'll say that again. Volunteering, financial donations, and networking with community-based groups for important veterans' services are the difference between getting a homeless veteran to 
a shelter and leaving them on the streets. Now we don't leave comrades behind. No matter what service they were in, we don't leave anyone behind. No matter if it was during wartime or here on the streets of America, we should always look out for one another. Now my daughter is a freshman right now at, at Gordon College, but last year, well actually since first grade, she's attended Whitensville Christian School. And um, for, her senior, for her senior year, they could either do a, a term paper, probably like a 15 to 20 page term paper, or they could do a, a senior uh, uh, capstone project. And she chose to do a capstone project, and she wanted to focus on um, homeless veterans. So she partnered with the Veterans Inc. It's, it's a homeless shelter over in Worcester. And she just wanted to help in, in any way that she could. So she sponsored clothing drives, uh, car drives. Um, th there were people that gave a lot as far as gift cards to those veterans. We took a ton of clothes over there. Um, a lot of people went out to, to Walmart and different places and just bought new things for, for, for the veterans. There, there was also, um, uh, the school also donated 50 Dutch apple crumb pies to the veterans. There were gifts that were given to the, uh, uh, to the women veterans and their children. It was just a wonderful project. And she had many friends that also volunteered there at Veterans Inc. So it was very rewarding. And she brought attention to the plight of the homeless veterans. How do we say thank you? Do we say thank you? Thank a soldier, an airman, a marine, a sailor, a coast guardsman, an officer. The Bible tells us if you owe debts, pay debts. If honor, then honor. If respect, then respect. The debt our nation owes those who've worn the uniform is a debt we will never be able to fully repay. Freedom is powerful. It is a gift. It is a treasure. And it is attainable. The most significant, important gifts in life are always worth fighting for. And often they come with a great price. They are not free. Somewhere along the way, someone paid dearly for the liberties we enjoy so freely today. But sometimes we forget it's easy to take them for granted. We enjoy freedom, but most of us alive today have always had it. We may not even be fully aware of just how many men and women have paid dearly for the gifts that we enjoy today. The price was paid through many long years. In the word of God, Jesus said, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. No greater love. Today we pause and pay honor to those men and women who have, during their military service, sacrificed their time, their strength, ambition, health, and even their own lives on this earth to benefit friends, both known and unknown. For all those who have protected our nation, for the men and women in uniform, together we say thank you. Thank you for reminding us that there is incredible love and sacrifice displayed when one is willing to stand strong and fight for freedom. Mothers and fathers gave and still continue to give their sons and daughters to sacrifice for this country. Some paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we as Americans could be free. This service of love and sacrifice on behalf of all people points us directly to the greatest love of all the very gift and sacrifice of Christ. God also gave his son, his only son, his very best for you and me. He also paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom, not only for the freedom of Americans, but for the freedom of the world. Our Savior was willing to pay the ultimate price so that we could live in freedom, freedom from sin and freedom from bondage. As we are gathered here today, I challenge you to take some time now or later to reflect upon your life. I know that I personally should not be here right now, 
I've had many close calls with death. I'm thankful for my life. I am more than grateful to live in this country and to be an American. I am thankful for you who serve, all of you who serve, and even the families who serve. You also serve. Thank you to each and every one of you who, who fought for my freedom. Yes, I have regrets. Yes, there are mistakes that I have made and continue to do. But God has brought me through many trials and brought me over many hurdles. Isaiah 46 and 4 tells us, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. John Piper, he said, life is wasted if we do not grasp the glory of the cross, cherish it for the treasure that it is, and cleave to it as the highest price of every pleasure and the deepest comfort in every pain. What was once foolishness to us, a crucified God, must become our wisdom and our power and our only boast in this world. Let this not be another Veterans Day observance where we pay tribute for a day and then we forget about each other for the rest of the year until this time comes around again. The statement says how quickly we forget. Let us remember the men and women who serve. Let us thank them and appreciate what their service means to us personally. Let us show them by our actions and appreciate that you are not forgotten and you are not alone. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for our veterans and for their families. Many of our warriors carry scars in their hearts as well as on their bodies. Dark memories haunt their dreams at night. Fears cloud their waking hours. Jesus, you came to give us abundant life by providing a way for us to release our pain to you. On the cross, you bore our sorrows and brokenness. And when we trust you, we can exchange our wounds for your joy in a future unhindered by fate. Bring this gift now to the veterans of our nation who bear tangible and intangible wounds. Heal them, Lord. Bless the families of our veterans. Give them patience and wisdom and strength. God, not everything that happens in life is good, but you promise to work all things together for good to those who love you and align their lives with your purpose. Create good in the families of veterans who have experienced pain and loss. Do this miracle, we pray. We honor our veterans in your name. We thank you as we thank them for their sacrifice. We ask you to return to them the favor of your blessing, a gift we on our own could never offer. We ask that you would give our veterans a peace beyond the peace they fought to secure, a peace in their own hearts wrapped in the joy of a life touched by your strong hand. In the mighty name of our Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your time, for your sacrifice, and this great honor of speaking to you. May God richly bless you, keep you, and strengthen you. Thank you. Proclamation from the uh, Department of Massachusetts uh, American Legion. The American Legion Auxiliary Department of Massachusetts, Massachusetts recognizes the female veteran is an integral part of the veterans community. And the national and department presidents have both adopted honoring uh, female veterans as their special project this year. 
here in Hopkinton, you're going to take this opportunity to thank Betty Brannigan. Can you come up here, Betty? We'll just pose for a little picture, okay? <laughs> All right? All right. And this is for you. Okay? Oh. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for your service. Okay, we, we are the lucky ones. We are living a life that so many other men and women have fought to preserve and defend. As veterans, we are united by a certain convictions and a common affiliation that began as young men and women <coughs> entering our country's military service. The commitment we made to each other and our nation is being recognized here today and throughout the United States that bond of faith with our brothers and sisters with whom we serve has been the catalyst for our nation's success and survival. <coughs> yes, we are family. With selfless dedication to each other. Family is, of course, the traditional grouping necessary for our life's greatest moments, achievements, and emotional happiness. We can think of this day as a family reunion, an occasion for all the members of our extended family and their loved ones to assemble, reminisce, and honor those who are here only in spirit. <clears throat> family, as an established virtue along with God and country, is the most important social unit. It is both security and love. The Veterans Family of Hopkinton sincerely thanks all of you for attending this morning and ask that you remember the following veterans that we have lost this year. Starting with Wendell Hayward. Passed away at 88 years old. Wendell was from Westboro. He married a Hopkinton girl. He was a Korean War veteran and a Legion Post 202 member as well as a member of John Warren Lodge here in town. A devoted family man who loved spending time with his grandchildren. William Hosmer, 80 years old, United States Air Force. Bill was from Holliston, but he ended his career in education as a <coughs> superintendent of our Hopkinton schools for, the, for 16 years. Rick McMillan, only 71. Rick was a lifelong Hopkinton resident. He will always be remembered for his 35 years with the fire department, as well as our election warden. Even when he became ill with ALS, he always attended every American Legion gathering. Merrill Richelieu, 79 years old, United States Navy. He was originally from Michigan, and after eight years in the U.S. Navy, began his career at Raytheon, and that brought him here to Hopkinton, where he lived for 39 years. He left behind his wife for 57 years, Susan, and his son, Jeff. Timothy Clifford, 79 years old, United States Navy, served two years aboard the destroyer USS Abbott. He worked as an electrical and manufacturing engineer for General Dynamics. Bernard Lowell, 83 years old, United States Army, a marathoner and a manager owner of retail stores. He was very active in St. John's Church as a religious teacher and Eucharistic minister. David Nelson, 77, lifelong resident of Woodville. David graduated from Hockenden High School in 1959 and then served four years in the U.S. Air Force. Upon retirement, he 
He volunteered at our senior center and also served as chairman of the Council on Aging. Hudson Plucker, 86. So many of us remember Hudson as the adjutant of our local American Post 202. And his legacy lives on through his three children, nine grandchildren, and 18 great grandchildren. Marjorie Frances Langdon, 96 years old. A 1941 graduate of Framingham High School, she enlisted in the Navy and served during World War II. Her marriage to the late Harry Langdon brought her to Hopkinton, where she became an active member of St. John's Church. Pasquale Pat Barretta, 79, United States Army, came from New York. He moved to Hopkinton in 2004 and immediately became involved in various community boards. Richard Dick Trudell, 80 years old, after graduation from Natick High School, he served four years in the Navy, and he began his career as an electrical contractor based here in Hopkinton that lasted over 35 years. Robert Lavoie, 91 years old, Bob's service in the Marine Corps placed him in the most famous battle in the history of our nation. As an Iwo Jima veteran, that wasn't enough. He later re-enlisted only to find himself in another horrific war zone in Korea. His service to our community with his wife Jackie was legendary. Charles Chuck Walsh, 83. He lived in Woodville, graduated from Hoffman in High School, 1953. He was an officer in the U.S. Army, worked in the opticianary business, and at Sal Hill Country Club. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Allen. This now concludes our Veterans Day ceremony. I would like to thank you all for coming here today, and I invite you to join us for coffee and breakfast. Thank you.